was uh, it was one of the more interesting years that I was uh, a part of, only because there was probably a little more unknown with this team when the year started. Um, partway through, there were still some unknowns. But uh, this year's team, if it didn't teach us all a lesson in resiliency and uh, power of uh, togetherness, um, having a common goal, being obsessed with what they didn't get last year, um, learning from the players in the past, um, you put all those things together, and I think this year's team kind of was a microcosm of all that. The 27 wins... When I think of that, and then I start thinking about, you know, those three, four, five definite wins. If we just shoot anything from the line, it's it's amazing that this team, uh, where they went and where they could have been. Um, how do we get there? You know, school record in assists, ranked in the top five in the nation. Um, our assist to turnovers, which hasn't been as strong other years, was off the charts, I think it was ranked seventh. Uh, school record for block shots, not necessarily one of our fortes, but uh, we do that. Um, second most threes, almost 300 threes we made this year, and shooting a pretty good percentage. That was important. Um, and then I think there was some individual things as classes. You know, our senior class, uh, 112 wins, um, ties the class of 2002 for the second most wins in school history. Uh, you look at what this class accomplished, you know, four NCAA Sweet 16s, two Elite Eights, a Final Four. Um, that storybook, I mean, that's that's big-time things that we've been a little too accustomed to here, but it, is not the uh, the norm. Um, Dawson himself, you know, we'll we'll probably all, or I will, you know, always want more from him. But seventh in career rebounds, sixth in career steals, fifth in career starts, scores thirteen hundred points in the top twenty-five in the history of the school. Be the only player six six and under since the late 80s that has led in, in rebounding. A team. Trice has got, you know, some unbelievable stats too. You know, 1,100 career points. He's got almost 600 points this year, which matches the three-year total that he had, which shows that some injuries and some things, if it didn't happen, uh, he might have some unbelievable career stats. Um, he's got almost 200 assists, which is almost the, in the top 10 best in the history of our school. Um, Three-pointers, he's tied for fifth in a career. When you think of his career, was so rocky this first couple years. Denzel Valentine gets 102 three-pointers. That's the third best single season since they started that. Uh, these are all stats that I'm reading, and then I'll I'll kind of go through it, but uh, I think I think the the one other thing this team did that isn't stat related is they've really um, they really bonded and realized they needed each other, you know. And I think it was midway or beginning of, of February where uh, probably the best sell job I did was to my players, my staff, and myself. And that's going back and looking at all those games over and over at nights and saying, how good or bad did you play and how much did those damn free throws and, and things cost you? And I realized that they cost us enough games that the 13-7 and seven record could have been, you know, 18-4 and four and we'd be, or whatever, and we'd be, you know, ranked and we'd be happy and everybody would be healthy. And, and I think that, the way they got there then was to believe in that a little bit, and then they started playing better because they did believe in it a little bit. The layups we were missing, we started making more of them, <coughs> started taking less bad shots. Our turnovers started coming down enormously, and uh, 
the rotation, the change, getting Travis to the two probably helps some. Getting Tum in there defensively probably helps some. Uh, getting a scorer coming off the bench probably helps some. It sounds like there was a million things in a coaching book that you would put together just on this season alone that would uh, would all be true and right. And, and uh, at the end of the day, um, I was lucky to have good leadership in Trice and Valentine. Uh, a quote-unquote star player that had no big ego in Dawson. Um, a team that bought into the defense – which I still don't know how we became as good a defensive team as we became, and maybe a team that bought into each other as good as any I've had from a standpoint of knowing they needed each other to be successful because they weren't quite talented enough to do it on their own. And uh, as we talk, as you ask questions, I'll probably come up with some more things. But uh, it was just it was a frustrating year, the first half to coach. Because of all the missed free throws and you, and the the score kind of, you know, it wasn't that we shot that much better from the free throw line, but I think our confidence in things rose when we realized why we were losing. It wasn't that we were shooting bad; we were shooting good. It wasn't that our defense was bad; our defense was good. It was just that bottom line in the Twitter world meant that you weren't any good because you lost games. And uh, getting over that hump, I think, was a big part of the year. So questions. We're still going to use the mics for TV and radio. Instead of a good-looking girl, we got Matt that's <laughs> handing these things out. For Sucks. Those of us that have covered you for any amount of time, this was clearly the team that outwardly appeared you enjoyed coaching more than any other. And quite frankly, my opinion, it's, I think this added years onto your coaching life after the last several took them off. Are those two assumptions correct, Tom? Well, you know, when you go through some problems, which everybody does, you just look around. Some of them uh, that are uh, frustrating and some of them that, you know, like a Delvon Rowe injury or something that, you know, uh, Russell Bird injuries, the, the, those kind of things that you just have no control over. So when you put the combination together, there's always frustrating moments. There's frustrating for every coach, but... Watching a bunch of guys come together that, you know, I thought when we lost Javon and we lost um, Kaminsky that, you know, we were going to struggle. And we didn't struggle as much as I thought we would because we should have been better from the free throw line than we were. And I really think it would have made a big difference if you win a couple of those games early um, you beat Maryland here, you do something like that. It just makes such a difference moving forward of where you are, especially in a league that had everybody stacked in that that area of two through ten. But uh, as far as longevity, as far as what motivates me, as far as what makes me feel better, you always feel better when you have a bunch of guys that are as dedicated to what you want to accomplish as you are. And um, that's important. And if there's one thing that I'll sell to the, to the end of time here, it's that, uh, you know, everybody's got to care the same amount if you're going to be successful. And uh, that's not as easy to do as you think. And this year's team made it a lot easier. Tom, kind of going along, along those same lines, would you consider this season as one that, re-energize you not only maybe he's just a basketball coach but just life in general did it, did well, it kind I was of... going to say I would take it farther it would re-energize me if it happened at Purdue or if it happened at Stanford or if it happened at Texas you know um, it's kind of one of those stories you like to see because it it makes you realize this whole year the way it went you don't have to have the most talent to win. It makes it easier. But the commitment that you make, and it's the same commitment that all of us have to make to our jobs, to our families, to whatever. You know, it's it's the same thing. And that's kind of what this team, it, it came to fruition when you look at what they've accomplished and how they accomplished it. I don't know if it 
it it uh, it brings more uh, length to how long you want to be in it. It just makes you feel better about what you're doing. You know, I it's fun to watch guys be successful that earned it. I mean, if there's anybody that worked harder than Trice and Valentine uh, and Tom, you know, and I'm, I'm just pulling out guys because those guys were at a different level than some of the other guys. But what started to happen, they started dragging other guys. And Dawson's in working on his free throws. And Schilling's in working on his free throws. And, you know, different guys are doing different things. And it gives you a benchmark for next year of saying, look what we accomplished. Now, what more could we accomplish if they would have done that in the off season instead of during the season. So, yeah, I think it uh, it makes you feel good. I bet you a lot of coaches out there will use our team as a uh, kind of a, a resting point of this is what you can accomplish if you do this, this, and this because it's been well documented. You guys documented it well. It's been truth. The one thing I would, I would like to dismiss, um, and maybe it's – I'm, 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 in fact, I'm sure it's my fault, uh, just the way I did it. But I did not think losing those two guys that maybe we'd be as good as I thought we could have been last spring. I thought we, you know, if we had everybody back and we got the guys coming in, I thought we could be maybe a very, very good team. By the time we got to October, you know, not having to stretch four and guy that could shoot it, a big guy could shoot it. I thought that would hurt our team a lot. But we still had, you know, I was really impressed with Javon and a couple of the other guys. Uh, you know, Gavin seemed to have gotten a lot better, Costello better. And yet I uh, I kept saying that this team is an overachieving team and it makes it look like they're not as talented. They're not as talented as some teams. But we had three very good basketball players and, and three other, four other guys that could play a, a very good role. We just weren't as consistent all the time. And the free throw shooting, which I've mentioned now for the 25th time, but it, it had such an impact on the final outcome of things that uh, it negated the good things that were going on, how we were ranked so high defensively. I mean, there was one time we were ranked – after a month, I think one of the top offensive teams, you know, we were third in scoring points. We were second in field goal percentage. We were, we were in the top two or three in three-point field goal percentage. I mean, there were some incredible things we accomplished. You know, the assists, the turnovers that dropped, the rebounding stayed up there. Um, I've said it in a bunch of press conferences, but you can't be so bad if you're doing all those things right in a conference that was pretty good. So I don't want it to, you know – hell of a job coaching or team overachieved. Let me tell you something. Our players did a hell of a job. My assistant coaches did a hell of a job. To me, I did the same job I've tried to do every year. You know, I think they elevated. It was the the players that elevated their game. It was the leadership that kept them believing. And maybe one speech, one speech somewhere in early to mid February when we were 13 and seven and it looked like the roof was caving in that that I got up on his board and I showed him where we could be with playing the exact same way if a couple guys made a free throw a coach might have done a better job on a you know down three at the end of the game type thing where we could be so I'll take blame for mine you take blame for yours how can we improve it and I thought we did a hell of a job of that so the, do I think we were a seven seed? No, I think we we're better than that. I said that then, but I understood it too, because we we caused our own problems. We put ourselves in a position. Um, but if we weren't a seven, if we were a five seed, maybe it wouldn't have been so surprising, you know. Um, but boy, you go back as I've done a million times before this press conference and tried to not make excuses, but look at where I think we. We earn to be, and you know, they always have that theory that, I don't know, I should ask Gus this, I, I think, I don't think it's over a season that they even out. You know, you lose some, you should have won, you won some, you should have lost. I think over a five or ten year period, that's true. But this year, I can count maybe one we could have lost, but five or six, 
that we almost should have won. And it was one of those weird years, and until it all came together, um, I guess we were semi-overachieving at the end. In the locker room after the loss, Tom said something very strange for a freshman about being there, and he said, I can't imagine it ever feeling good unless you cut the nets down on the last day. To have a freshman that grasps that competitiveness and talks about going to have to get back to a championship, Tom, I mean, that's very well, rare Tom, to have. Tom and, and Denzel, I mean, those two guys started that second on what they wanted to accomplish next year. Um, Denzel started it last year. Uh, you know, that's where I uh, – if there's an area, you know, I mean – Denzel will be the first to tell you he's still got to tighten up his game. You know, the thing him and I argue about or question each other on, uh, it's still got to happen. But if there's a guy that is more driven to be successful, leave a legacy here that his dad can enjoy, he can enjoy, the former players can enjoy, I can enjoy, Denzel Valentine has been one of the ultimates. And he, I think, will take this team – to new heights next year. What does new heights mean? It might not mean as deep in the tournament. It might. But but there will be an expectation by the players. And whenever there's an expectation by the players, it's a lot better than if there's an expectation by the coach or the fans. And I think Tom was as emotional as any freshman I've seen in there after talking about Travis, talking about what this team did for him, and almost vowing that uh, there's going to be some uh, there's going to be a lot of work goes in to try to get back to where we're we're at, and uh, yeah, that's encouraging. Uh, I got a senior and a freshman doing it, and I got a lot of guys that I think uh, want to jump into that leadership uh, role. I think you're going to see Aaron Harris. He was pretty vocal after a lot of games. Jump into that. I'm hoping Costello takes another step, but I hope also that we have. A couple guys that follow better. Um, Marvin Clark has to become a better follower. Uh, you know, maybe a Schilling Costello, maybe an Elvin Ellis have to become better followers if they're not great leaders. And uh, but the leadership we got, I think we got good guys for other people to follow. Tom, what's your impression of, of Brandon as a professional now that his career is done? What, in terms of what you're hearing from NBA people, from Brandon Dawson. Oh, I thought you said Bryn. Uh, no, yeah, no, sorry, Brandon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, in terms of what you're hearing, his pro prospects and, and what, what you think he can be. You know, I think a lot of people think he's got skills that are professional level. He can rebound, he can defend at a professional level. Um, I think he's proven he, he really is, a, you know, again, the advantage to opening practices, which some people think I'm crazy, but there are advantages you get to see. Uh, you know, that he has improved. I mean, you, you watch him shoot free throws at the end of the year. It's not even close. You watch him shoot jump shots. It's not even close. You know, there's there's still the consistency factor. But, you know, when I see this this group at the next level draft guys on potential, I mean, Brandon Dawson's not only got potential, but he's he's, you know, just because he's, a year or two older than some. He's also had those those injuries that set him back some. So what do I hear? I mean, I hear there's definite interest. Do I hear any definitive stuff? No. I think he's going to have to earn his way there like some do, but just about everybody does now, by, either by playing in different events or when they invite you to things or a team invites you in. Um, but I, you know, I got a lot of faith in Brandon, believe it or not. I just always wanted more for him than I think sometimes he wanted for himself. And some of that is good and some of that is bad. Um, there's there's no ego, and uh, that's good. Um, sometimes I think there's got to be some selfishness, and there's none of that. And sometimes I think that's bad. But he is, uh, in my estimation of players that I've had, he has the potential to definitely play in the NBA. And... Uh, I, you know, I went to a game last night, so I'd get a better clue myself. And uh, I, I, I saw some interesting players playing out there in a game last night. And, you know, I look at Brandon Dawson, and he definitely can be into that group. Any questions? Yeah. 
There's some here, but they're. I need a mic. Tom, would you uh, are you one twenty point loss from feeling a heck of a lot better about this season? Uh, or, or do, do no, I really not, Fred. I'm, I, I'm feeling great about the season. I, 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 you know, and watch how you write that, because, you know, I, 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 who did I hear yesterday complaining about Twitter because they took bits and pieces of it? Somebody on national TV, but um, it, uh, it's disappointing to lose the way we lost, and to end it on that note. Um, so that took a couple days. The hardest thing there ever is to do is that be at a press conference right after something like that because it just kind of, for a moment, it takes away everything you gained in that month run for a moment. And you don't, that's all you think about for the moment. But in looking back, I don't think we overachieved as much as maybe I thought or you thought. Um, but I, I don't think um, I don't think we were as good as Duke. I thought things had to go right for us to win, or maybe as good as Wisconsin either. But we almost beat them the week before. And uh, this team was on a mission, and this team proved that um, if you do the things you're supposed to do, you defend right, you rebound right, you t- take good shots. What I thought happened in that last game is a combination of you know, some bad shots, a couple of bad turnovers, you know, a couple of calls, a couple of this, a couple of – everything that could go against you went against you, and we caused most of them. That was disappointing, but when you think of the stage you're on and, and the guys and what they've been through, um, you know, they made a hell of a run, did a hell of a job, and – uh as Hondo, you said, it was a fun team to be around. I mean, I, I would think to, it would be a fun team to cover. I'm sure you guys have your teams that you said, God, I'm glad that season's over with. I mean, in football and basketball and other sports because maybe guys didn't answer questions right or the egos or the just selfishness or whatever it was. I bet you had none of that this year, I would think, as I look back. So – Good team to cover, good team to cheer for, good team to coach. And uh, the loss dampened it for the two nights, but now it'll, it won't damp. Now it'll be um, – it'll kind of be up there in a mantle to say to some other team down the road, if you do this, this, and this, like the 2015 team. So they'll go as heroes in from a coaching standpoint. Now things I'll be able to use uh, – not the 20-point loss. And yet we'll learn from that, too. The, the, the bad shots, the bad turnovers. We'll learn from that and say, you know what? If you're not quite as talented, you can't do these things and expect to win. Yeah, speaking of the calls, Tom, I'm sure you watched the title game. It seemed like maybe that freedom of movement thing was a big thing at this Final Four. I know you talked some about it after the game, but where do you think things are going in, in that way, what what needs to change, if anything, about officiating? You know, if I if if I get on a rant about officiating or calls right now, it would ruin a good press conference. So maybe when we sit down after and we close up off the record, I'll talk about it more. But I, I think the one thing that I've stood straight on for a couple of years that I'll, you know. I talked about Twitter. We all laughed about it. I'm the, I'm the legendary joke around the country and probably hurts us some in recruiting. But every year that goes by, it becomes where well, there's more people agreeing with me. Okay? I think, you know, we, we look at officiating and... I think they do have to do some things, but it's not going to be against officials. It's not going to be against coaches. It's talking to an NBA official last night who knows the college game very well, you know. I think we're going to have to look at getting a group of officials that if they have to pay them a certain way, if they're unionized, if whatever there is, if we're ever going to want consistency, otherwise all of us should quit complaining about it 
and just realize it's just part of the the situations you're going to get because um, games, as we saw, are officiated differently, um, different times of year, different. Is it the officials? Is it they're afraid to make certain calls? Is it TV monitoring? Is it this? Is it that? I don't know. And uh, I'll answer the question that way, that I think there will be some changes. I don't know what they'll be. I feel bad for all parties. Make sure you don't don't give me a uh, Izzo's ripping the officials, and I feel bad for the officials. I feel bad for the coaches, and I feel bad for the players. And I got my reasons. I feel bad. I'm not going to stay here, but but there has to be. What am I looking for in a program? I'm looking for consistency. The only way there's consistency is if people hold people accountable to that consistency. So I've got you guys to hold me accountable. I got my boss over in the sixth floor to hold me accountable. I got my AD over in the second floor to hold me accountable. I got players to hold me accountable. That's the way it works. And that's why I think there's got to be a different format personally for this that might benefit the officials. But uh, I just uh, I feel bad for all parties. I think... When we make decisions and we go to, as you said, Joe, freedom of movement or not, you know, everybody circumvents the rules to find a way to do something. You know, you put the line in there, you the block charge, to this, to that. We've, we've kind of jumped all over, and I think that's hard. So I'd rather talk about this year's team and uh, this press conference than after we can, we can have a closed-door session on whatever you want to talk about, and I'll do that too. Yes. Same conversation as Brandon Dawson. What does the basketball future look like for Travis Trice? You know, that's a unique, that's an interesting one right now. As as around Christmas, he started getting, a, you know, a lot of interest. What does a lot of interest mean? You know, people calling or, you know, NBA guys talking. And, and then, it, remember, he went through that tough period there for a month and, uh, and then uh, really came on at the end. And, um, I mean, I think there is – there's definitely some basketball to be played for Travis. And I I think, um, you know, could he be one of those success stories? I watched the two little guys last night play that were pretty good. Um, the Thomas kid had, I think, 100 points, but it was probably 35 or 6 and 34. Not that you were counting, but in between innings, he found 34 as the number. The I got gotcha. you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and then uh, – and then uh, Lucas, the little guy who used to play at Texas, you know, was playing for the Pistons. So is there a place for a guy that uh, works his tail off, understands the game, has improved dramatically, uh, you know, he stays healthy. I think he'll I, – I just I, – I look at what Matt – some of the things Matt gave me and to think he's had more points this year than the other three years combined, that's amazing. But that speaks to injuries almost more than his game uh, that I know. And so uh, I think there'll be some basketball for Travis after here. It'll be interesting to see uh, how it goes here in the next couple weeks. Tom, looking forward a little bit, you mentioned that maybe this year's team didn't do some of the things in the off season last year. Um, player specific, what does Gavin Schilling and uh, Matt Costello have to do in the off season to just become more effective? Well, Gavin, um, and this is, you know, this is, uh, my honesty will get me in trouble, but Gavin has to fall in love with the game. You know, I think sometimes we assume that every player that plays football, basketball, or hockey is just baseball committed. There's a commitment, and then there's a commitment. And um, to be great, there's got to be a commitment that, is as consistent as, you know, breathing. And it's got to be every day. And Gavin, if, if you really look at, it's fun when a guy goes four for four from the line in a critical game when he's a poor free throw shooter. But if I told you what he's done in the last three months, there's been a commitment to that. Now, if I told you last year, I did not think he made a commitment to basketball the year before. And that's what you have to do, and it's a coach's job 
to push him, but I, I learned when I was really little that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And uh, so that has been our, our deal with Gavin. I've seen improvement this year in that. Sometimes it led to improvement like free throw shooting, but because maybe it wasn't there last year, it didn't lead to as much improvement in his offensive game. I saw at the end of the year in practice him improving his shot a lot, a lot. So what he does starting, we gave him the week off, starting next Monday will really determine who and what he is. And if you look at um, Costello in the same way, and um, there's a lot more commitment he had made to the game. He did have, uh, I think he finds out today, on uh, you know his surgery, but I mean he's definitely got some cleaning up of his knee in some way, shape, or form, and it really, it really took him back the last five, six weeks. Not anything that was going to make it worse, but it looked like either some floating cartilage or some that is going to be uh, cleaned up a little bit. We don't. It's nothing. It looks to be major, but definitely hindered his his play. And I take my hat off to him for. Hardy work, you know. Uh, Marvin's a good example. It was it was Marvin, Tom, and Javon, and all of a sudden it was Javon and Tom, you know, walking in every day. And you know, I just had a meeting with Marvin this morning. Um, to be a great player and to play at the level you got to play at, there's got to be that commitment. And uh, I bet you could talk to a thousand coaches in five different sports, and you, a lot of times you could count on a couple hands, the real commitments. And uh, when I looked this year, when I looked at in that freshman class of Marv and, I mean, of Tom and JB, you know, unfortunately JB didn't get to play, it's, it's good enough to make it, you know. When I look at the sophomore class, I think there needs to be some work done there. When I look at the junior class and in Valentine and, um, and even Costello some, but Valentine and Forbes, um, off the charts, and and then nobody worked harder than Travis. So, uh, you know, we had five, six guys that I thought lived, eat, and slept it, which is pretty good. And yet, hopefully, those others will learn from how how maybe good players improve to be great players. And uh, that's what the meetings. The next next week, there'll be a lot of meetings to kind of put that all together and show guys how much guys improved from last spring till now if they are committed to doing something on a daily basis. Yeah, there's there's a whole slew of things. But when you get frustrated that you're not making a layup or a shot, it affects a lot of your game. When you get frustrated you're not making a free throw, it affects your team. And – you know, so I look at the team things that we were frustrated with in January, and they improved not by shooting that much better, but by realizing we had to take other avenues. We've got to make our layups. What, what can we control more? Um, I think it's the same for Gavin. Um, he is, he came in here, you know, what, what you guys got to understand is you got to think back. Some of you 10 years, some of you 15, some of you 20 some of you 55 years ago when you went to college, you know, first time away, there's distractions. There's things that happen that happen to every one of us in this room. And yet, if you're put in a position where you're trying to play at a high level, um, those can affect you. They don't always have to be bad. You know, they're not always drugs and alcohol or robbing 7-Elevens or something. They're, they're, there are a lot of good things. They're just part of the process. And we want to skip the process a lot. And that's what's wrong with us. We always want to skip the process. Let's make the 18-year-old 22 or the 20-year-old 25. And so there's not supposed to be any mistakes or learning. And uh, what I'm trying to do is, is trying to convince guys that, you know, some of those adages that were said since before time, Herner time, you know, uh, BC, you know, some of those adages of, you know, you get out of it what you put into it, you know, 
You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You know, some of those that have withstood the test of time, there's a reason. And the reason is, um, eventually you got to look in the mirror and you got to figure out what you want to be. And with our guidance um, to try to push you there, well, I don't think I have to guide as much. I think Travis and, and even Brandon and Denzel did a good job and then when we're down to the final four, those former players did a good job of trying to bring a little more reality to it. And that's what you try to do in this job. You try to get them to understand it as quick as you can. But let's understand that not everybody is as driven as someone else. That's it about Gavin. I mean, if he just makes the steps that he made from last year to this year, though, he'd be – I mean, I, he made as big as strides as anybody from one year to the next – wouldn't you say? I mean, it, it doesn't he did, yeah. and then he kind of went downhill a little bit there in that one stretch uh, in the middle of the season. You know, I thought I thought beginning that's why I ended up starting. He really made some strides, but you know, you're gonna all laugh, but there's assistants in there that still I got after because one of my things the last summer was free throw shooting, not expecting it to be like it was, just knowing that. We didn't have enough ammo in my mind and didn't know if we were going to have Forbes then when we went into the summer and didn't know that we were going to lose a guy we lost. Um, I just thought free throw shooting would be important. I'm not sure that that we took it that way. Um, this this year, I might take down all those banners, and there might be a free throw chart painted on that wall, 30 by 400, and uh, they're going to have to fill it out every day. Uh, so, you know, we learn by the best way you can learn, by screwing up. You know, we learned by the best way you can learn, and that's things didn't work out right. So now it's not a coach telling them they went through it. And there's nothing like going through something. Unfortunately, you don't always want that to happen. That's why your leadership is so important. I think that when this year's freshmen come in, I got a feeling Denzel and Tom and and even Aaron and, and you know they're going to be talking to them about free throw shooting. They're going to be talking to them about um, you know what we had a taste of that thing. That thing's pretty good. You know, I asked Tom today. I said, "You want to go back there?" You know, and his eyes lit up like. Uh, you know, he almost jumped over the table at me, you know. I mean, it was – you can't explain. I said, let me ask you four freshmen this when I met with them this morning. I said, did I over-exaggerate or under-exaggerate? Javon Best said, oh, it's way better than what you said, and I didn't get to play. So I said, I under I under-exaggerated it. And I said, because you can't explain how good it is. You can't explain what it's like playing in the championship game of the Big Ten tournament. You know, we've played in three out of four – and they made that a bigger deal, you know. That thing down in Indy last year was unbelievable. That thing in Chicago, just the way they did it and the hype and there's something about being there playing for a championship. And I, I, t I tell you what, it reinvigorated me. I mean, I, I think they've done a good job of it. And uh, I think those guys are going to want to get back to things like that. And yet the task will be tougher. The league's going to be better. I mean, we haven't even talked about next year or the league yet. Maybe that's coming up. Go ahead. Actually, a question about officiating. I don't think they'll get you in trouble. I think more officiating philosophy. The game against Ohio State in 2012, physical game, great game, the Big Ten championship game, uh, tournament championship game. Purdue this year. I mean, those very physical games seem like high-level basketball. Is there a sense that that's not good basketball? Is that why the game is, they want the game to be called differently? Do you sense that at the top they don't like that style? Well, I think one of the problems that you have in any rules you make that are of any kind of rules is, you know, we're trying to break up from this 350 teams. I mean, 350 teams that are all trying to make the same rules with different level players. Um, that's hard. And then you, you get to this freedom of movement, and, you know, what we've got now is a lot more team zoning. And so scoring... You know, somebody had a great line I, I heard on the radio today, back to being able to listen once in a while. In fact, I think you were on, Freddie, and somebody said they watched the game. A, a pro team scored 61 points last night, and they got a 24-second shot clock. Well, I want to make it a 10-second shot clock. You know, 
great point. Um, you know, I think, you know, I've not been a big advocate of the charge change. You know, like I said, you freedom of movement, then a guy can sit under the basket and get run over. You know, it doesn't make sense to me. If we're going to have freedom of movement, let's have freedom of movement. It's like we want to we want to pick and choose. But the physical nature of something, you know, I hear that we want to make it more like the NBA, you know, that they aren't allowed to touch people either. Well, I sat right on the floor last night so I could see what that's like. And I wouldn't call that a high-level game. I mean, it wasn't for playoff and everything. All right. That's all right. Um, how can it be physical? You know? And, and the minute we put in too many rules, people circumvent them. And uh, I don't know if people want to see people going to the free throw line every minute. You know? We had more free throws probably this year. We probably had more fouls. I keep saying we want the best players sitting on the bench. But maybe the most important thing, are we all going to change the zone? Okay? I mean, Judd is going to get his dream. Okay? It took me 20 years, but next year, I swear to you, we will play some if everything stays like it is. That's maybe good. I'm not saying it's bad. Duke played four possessions of it. You know, I'm not saying it's bad. But if everybody went to that, you're going to see scoring come down some more. And um, I just get a kick out of it now because me personally, I didn't think it was right when we were chucking cutters and all that. I mean, that's what we were allowed to do. That's what we did. Um, I, don't, I don't think that was good. But I think we've gone way too far to the other side. And it's not the officials' fault; it's our fault. I mean, it's the coaches that are, that are, you know. But we got so many different levels, and it's hard, man. It's 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 hard. I, I just, hey, put your big boy pants on if you're going to play at this level, and you're going to have guys jumping over the 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 rim, and you're going to have guys with speed and strength. And you can't you can't have a Barbie doll game. You got to play, you know, and. That's that's my opinion. So Sullinger said something about last night. He said, hey, it didn't look like the championship game in the Big Ten, did it? I said, no, meaning he just meant because it was so intense. And we laughed. And uh, But I think some people think that was one of the best games in the last seven, eight, ten years. It was pretty physical. It was pretty well done. I didn't see I didn't hear any either coach complaining about it uh so move on yes tom do you anticipate everyone staying around and obviously you guys got a couple transfers last year open to that again possibly yeah you got to be open to that unfortunately i'm not sure i i still agree with it i don't know what the fifth year thing will be but uh um they're definitely, uh, you know, we're going to be open to that. Uh, everybody staying, I'll, I'll give you a better idea in a week because I'm having my, like, exit interviews, and I don't mean exit, um, but, but I do meet with my guys after the season. I started this morning. Um, I will continue this afternoon. All, all I'm telling is everybody that wants to commit to what I want to commit to is staying if they want to stay. And if somebody doesn't want to commit to that, they're not staying. It's I'm gonna make it real simple this year. You know, you know, you want if you don't want to, I understand. This doesn't mean you're good, you're bad, you're indifferent. But we're gonna commit to what Travis did. We're gonna commit to what Denzel does. We're gonna commit to what Tom does. We're gonna commit to what Aaron does. We're gonna commit to what Cleves did and Peterson and Magic. And we're gonna go all the way back. We're gonna go back to well. We're gonna look at this like you should look at it. Look at the commitment. 90% of those guys made, and look where they all ended up. Better players, better teams. And so, um, you know, there's there's a guy or two that I'm going to post up to and, and just say, hey, you know what, I haven't seen it so far. Um, is that going to change? If it doesn't change, you know, there's a lot of good places to play, and that's what you do. Am I going to run anybody off? Nope, not run anybody off. But 
Am I going to make sure that they're either going to do it our way, our way, or the highway? Yeah, I'm going to do that. It'll be pretty simple. Another question. That, that's where this team invigorated me. And your question, your first question. It made me re-believe in what I think we all believe in. Work hard, good things will happen. Stay committed, good things will happen. Mark D'Antonio, stay the course, good things will happen. You know, um, what you put in is what you're going to get out there going to happen. So if, if nothing else, maybe it recommits me to those things, which is exciting for me. And uh, I think the one or two people that I'm not sure were in that, I, I think some of them learned a lot this year. And, and I'm envisioning that um, maybe everybody will commit to that. I really am. Yes. Tom, another one on the, the freedom of movement stuff. You mentioned after the game just about how you wanted to recruit a little bit more to that. I mean, how much do you see this roster kind of style of play changing in years forward to, to kind of adapt? You know, as I said, I'm not going to get into any more officiating stuff right now. I'll do it after. But, but I'll just say that after the year, I'm going to look at a lot of different things and how teams played and, you know, why are certain teams getting to the, the line? What are we doing? What should we be doing? I mean, anytime there's a rule change, you know, three-point shot, wider lane, uh, a longer three-point shot, you know, you really should adjust to the rules. The problem is when you're talking about a three-point shot or the lane wider or this or that, it's a constant. When you're talking about rule changes that aren't constants that are still up for um, interpretation, good, yeah. I stick to those four letters and under, so, but the interpretation is a good word. The interpretation or somebody else's uh, opinion of it, um, it's a little harder to coach to it. But I learned something. You know, as I said, I, I used a lot this year. You can't change history, but you can learn from it. And uh, I learned a lot in this, in this past weekend. I really did, and it's going to benefit me and hopefully our team. Javon Bess is a guy that has freakish athletic ability and a work ethic that is not questioned. Is he a guy, Tom, with a strong summer, could be an immediate impact guy without that freshman year? Well, believe it or not, he has good athletic ability. I wouldn't call him freakish because I'm looking at, you know, a Brandon Dawson or, or, or a Jason Richardson, but he has freakish intelligence. That's what he has. He's he's a smaller version of Day Day. He's he's got very good, and he has ability to get fouled. As he did, he's improving his shot. It's so hard to tell because he was gone so much of the season and he didn't practice much of it. But we loved him enough that as soon as he became eligible, I mean, as soon as he became healthy, I started him those three games. You know, and. Um, is he Magic Johnson? No. no. Is he a superstar right now? No. He is the consummate like a Valentine. He is going to be the – I'm not going to worry about whether he's in the gym. I'm not worrying about whether he's taking care of business in school. I'm not worried about him socially. I, I think he has, a, he has a great intelligence as a basketball player, and he can defend people. He has a nose for the ball like a linebacker. He can rebound without being that. You know, that's where I say a miniature, a guard version of Day Day is probably pretty good. Not a great shooter yet, uh, but very good understanding passer. Um, Javon Best excites me, and I haven't really even seen him. <laughs> he just excites me. I just, he, I'm trying to get him to be a little more um, talkative, but. Uh, the kid is, uh, and you know, and he's he's tied at the hip with Tom, so I don't know how he's going to go wrong. So I, I don't know, you know, what he's going to be able to do. I, I think you're going to see, you know, in fairness to a Bryn Forbes, talk about a guy that improved during the year defensively, I think you're going to see him. We're going to put a little cot in that weight room, and he ain't leaving there. I think you're going to see him take a huge step. Um, where we can get back, where we can 
maybe really get some things going with our guards because we have some depth and we can do some things. But uh, he's a guy that we haven't talked about as much. He probably got us to the Final Four, missed some good shots there. But if you look at him, he's lost weight. He's, you know, he's skinnier. He's, um, he needs a great off season. And in fairness to him, he didn't know if he was going to even be eligible last year, you know. So I think this will be a great summer. He's another guy like Denzel. I mean, he will do whatever I ask him to do. So if you look at the number of guys I got, Denzel and Aaron and and uh, JB and Tom and and uh, Bryn, and, I mean, there's five guards right now coming in that I know if we say jump, they're just going to say how high. They're going to get better, and they're going to push each other, and they get along together. Um, it's going to be that kind of team. Yeah. I just wanted to revisit a couple answers ago when you talked about being reinvigorated and and I think you said re-believe. Not that you had stopped believing, but what I mean, what, what does that mean? Exactly? Well, I mean, everybody's got to – you go through times in your career when you've been somewhere a long time where you have some ups and downs. You have – you know, I mean, there was a period we, we went through a year or two that we struggled. We still won. We still – one, but we didn't win the same way. Um, this team, uh, you don't like this team. You love this team. You really do. I mean, they just, they, um, you know, when Travis Trice broke down in the Louisville game at the end of the game, it was so real and from the heart. It wasn't, it, you just wanted to hug the guy and, thank him, but you also, you realize that he put everything he had into this season. You know, I got more guys. I think, I think I get paid more than enough, but I don't think anybody here gets cheated in what I do. Okay. I give this place every ounce of energy and ability that I have. I don't, I don't think I cheat it for a day, not for an hour. This place does not get cheated. It might not always go right, and it not, might not be right. But they're getting everything I got to give. I think this team, there were a lot of players that gave me everything they got that they could give. I don't think it's the norm. I, I, I think yeah, that's why there's special teams. That's why there's championship teams. That's why there's... Teams that, if you want to call them overachieving, you know, they do things that others wouldn't do. We had a more than a few guys that, uh, man, they gave us everything they they have. And uh, getting them, see the, seeing them accomplish something, you know, I go home and tell my son, hey, look what these guys did. I'll speak at places over the summer, and I'll say, look what this commitment did. So if you're in business, if you're in the media, if you're in anything, uh, they were role models this year. They, they, they were role models because they earned their keep. Not that they totally overachieved, like I said sometimes, because they were good players, but they overachieved as far as where they got this team and the games we won down the stretch. You know, when I go back and think about, you know, geez, I mean, you know, I – my buddy Mariucci said, I never heard you so down and after the Minnesota game. is the most down I've heard you in 10 years. He was right. He was right. But, you know, I look at Minnesota, and I, I watched that game again on my way home on a bus. They were good. They just had some struggles early in the year. That was a good team. And it just made me realize that, boy, we beat some good teams. You know, you said the Purdue game, Indiana down there without Dawson. I mean, this team won some big games. And that stretch we played of the four teams to get us to a Final Four, I still say, I don't know anybody that played a harder four-game stretch. So that means we had to be at that level every single day. And God give them credit for that because – don't give me credit for that. Give them credit for that. They're the ones that did that. 
At one press conference, you said in, I think it was in Jess, one summer we're just going to take a month off and do it differently. I don't think you're going to take a month off, but have you considered yeah, papering off a little? I have. I really have. We're going to do a little something because we're legally allowed to now, but uh, I'm, I'm actually meeting with my staff about summer school and about, you know, I don't like the way it is. I don't think a kid should have to go to school year-round, you know. I don't think there's one human being in this in this press conference that probably did it four straight years, is there? Else, there's a question whether some of you ever went to school. Just kidding. Um, I know I didn't, and I, I argue that with everybody. You know, they all put all these demands on us, so they got to graduate kids and this and that. Is that really fair to a kid to go to school really, really 12 months a year? You know, last year we ended. Summer school started a week later. We ended in the beginning of July, and three days later, we started the second session. And, you know, you do that so you can graduate and so you can do all this so that, you know, we just missed 12 days of school again. Nobody cares. Nobody says anything. No big deal. Um, I'd like to see a lot of you guys miss 12 days of school in uh, the first uh, 12 weeks and see how you do in classes, you know, and... uh, so I am, I am, I'm also questioning the injuries. I'm looking at all the things, looking at the pro guys. Um, you know, some downtime I think would be good for this team. Um, how do you do that and still, you know, accomplish what you want? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see, you know. Uh, maybe do more individual work this year than team stuff. I might change the two-hour thing a little bit. Um, I might just shoot free throws for two hours a week. Who knows? All right, guys. Thanks. That's it.